very good evening to everyone um, and thank you so much for coming this evening. Uh, I am videoing the presentation as well but uh, I thank you because this is a really exciting opportunity for me, it always is, because to be able to stand up and talk about something that you are deeply passionate about is something quite special. I was asked a few weeks ago about um, what my thoughts of, you know, what, what FIMBRA was all about for me. And the first thing that came to my mind was the word magnum opus, because that's what it feels like. And, and that's a really genuinely positive thing. You know, this is a, something that is very special. And uh, I absolutely feel so inspired by everything that we're doing and everything that we're going to do that I apologize if I enthuse about it too much. Now I won't bore you for too long, but what I wanted to do was to just set out for you this evening really the background behind the direction that we go in, the new things that we're going to be doing and also uh, the exciting things that are on the horizon. And I wanted to have this opportunity because it's so important that we're always looking forward. And where I wanted to start was with the Fimbra family. And this is something that we say so much, it almost becomes slightly cliched. But belonging is incredibly important. In fact, the strong positive relationships that enable all of our children, staff, and hopefully parents as well to feel they belong to the school and the school's wider family creates a connection that is very, very powerful. It's very powerful because you cannot feel free to be truly yourself unless you feel that you belong. And that is, in essence, what this school does so well. Because children here can be themselves. They can make mistakes. They can achieve great things and they aren't impeded even in the height of adolescence from enjoying being themselves. They have incredible relationships with their teachers, with each other and that for me is something that is deeply important and something that we will continue to cultivate. Now of course, if you've watched any of my videos, I have to finish everyone with uh, the words, better never stops. And do you know, that is more than just a mantra. It's a mindset for the world that we live in. And to be honest, we need our children to feel completely comfortable with that idea. I don't mean that they are constantly feeling dissatisfied with their life and wanting more. What I mean is that they're excited about the challenge of what they can achieve and what lies ahead on the horizon. And that's why we make such a big thing of it. Because you know, when uh, the London Olympics put out Better Never Stops in 2012, it was like a gift from heaven because it sums up in three words exactly what growth mindset is all about. And if you think about the world that we live in, the careers that our children will do in the future potentially don't exist. The sustainability that they are going to experience is not in place yet. They are going to live a life that will be constantly shifting. They are a generation that perhaps the media would have us believe and maybe popularist opinion would suggest are not equipped for those changes. So we have an enormous responsibility to help them to really be able to live better never stops. And so we are 
never standing still. We're always looking for what we can do more as a school and how we can encourage our children more and more and our staff with everything that we do. And that is no better exemplified than the immense investment that's put into this great school. You know, I've got James and Louise set at the back, but if you imagine what it must feel like to me to have to work with two people that, that have a business where they are constantly investing back for the children. Like the new music facilities, the hub, the all-weather pitch, the, the just look at the grass outside. And did you know that grass is not achieved without a massive investment in a borehole? You know, all these little things, that, well, they're not little things, they're massive things that actually enable us to have a beautiful canvas on which to work. And it's not just been the things that have been done this summer, this building that we stand in, the constant updates to rooms, my beautiful new office, and all sorts of other things like that, and boarding. Boarding is, has been, every year, boarding is upgraded, it's improved, it is just fantastic. And then, as you heard today, it gets even better, because this is already Harris fenced off, and our new performing arts centre will open in the summer and building is about to start. Full size theatre, dance studios, classrooms and everything that goes with that. The ability, what this is going to do for children's ability to perform on in high standard state of the art facilities is absolutely amazing. And when you add that, to all of the sports facilities, you add that to the learning facilities. If you haven't had a chance to go to our new hub, I've never seen anything like it in a school. You go, you go into it and it feels like you're walking into a five-star hotel. And what it says is that we value learning. We value those children who might find challenges with their learning and we give them the opportunity to have the best facilities, the best chance to enjoy their learning, to be inspired and motivated by their surroundings. The different textures, the different lighting, and all the innovative things there all help to do that. When I go over to Little Fimbra, it doesn't seem possible that that's only really just been in place just over a year. And then you see that that's still going. There's tree houses going up. There's forest school being extended. It is absolutely amazing. Those facilities, the facilities that we have at this school, if I think the time that I've been here, the eight years I've been head at the school, it has been, the school is unrecognizable in terms of its landscape and its facilities. But facilities are just, as I said, the canvas that we work with. Of course, the better the canvas you've got, the better the, the work that you're gonna do, the better the outcomes you're gonna get. But the key thing about Fimbra is culture. And we have a very, very powerful culture at the school. It is a culture that is centered on every child and young adult being the best of themselves and keep getting better. We continue to proliferate that through the Fimbra fire, through those lovely videos that I'm sure you watch through the seven habits, through better never stops, through all the things that go on on a daily basis. In every classroom, children hear about learnability. What is learnability? It's character for learning. It is your ability to push yourself to be the best learner that you can be under your own steam. And it is a network of constantly improving opportunity. Our children set I will statements, so do staff. They begin with the end in mind at the start of every term. They review that at the end of every term. It's getting them into habits that will last a lifetime. And culture comes about because of family. 
When people feel they belong, they conspire to create a great culture, a great learning culture, where it's okay to try hard. It's great to get up in assembly and get a headmaster's award. You can go and audition for the school show because no one's going to ridicule you for it. In fact, they're going to champion you for it. If you're playing a sports match, other children will want to know how you've done and they'll congratulate you. Your teachers will come along and watch you. That is how culture conspires and how it all comes together to make a powerful environment for young people to be their best. And I hope I speak on behalf of all the staff here today. It also enables us to be our best. Because when you work within an environment like that, you can't do anything less than give it your all. It becomes your part of your existence, part of everything that you do. Of course, we have to strive for the highest standards. And one thing that is a big development going on across this year is we are working uh, on something which we've started already, which is a fundamental change in educational approach. If we go back in history, back in schools in time, if I go back, if any of you have read Tom Brown's School Days or any of that, we would notice that the way that schools manage children generally and still today is that if you do something well, you get rewarded. If you do something bad, you get punished. It's a stick and carrot model that has been existent in education for as long as any of us could remember and as long as the history books would tell us. But it is not a model for our world as it is now. Now, what I don't mean is that we should take away expectations of high standards. But instead, if a young person is struggling with an expectation, they're struggling with a standard, they have a, a, a challenge of their character. Just in the same way that if they're struggling to read, they need support, they need nurture, they need coaching. If a child is struggling with, let's say, their punctuality, let's say, getting themselves dressed properly, let's say, um, being kind and positive, then we actually have a responsibility to coach them rather than punish them. Now, that doesn't mean that it's airy-fairy and soft. It doesn't mean that we let things go because that's easy. It means quite the opposite. It means we are razor sharp. We are focused on standards and we're helping children to be the best version of themselves genuinely. I don't know about you, but I spent my fair share of time in detention when I was at school. Did it ever enable me to change my behavior? No, all it did was act as a deterrent. So we have to look at this differently. And we are developing, along with our student leaders and staff, a brand new approach to managing the character development of our children. Managing it through high expectations coupled with close support and coaching. That doesn't mean that you get away with low standards. It means quite the opposite. It means someone will notice, someone will support you, someone will plan to see you, to coach you, to take you all the way through to your emergence with a character that no longer has that issue and it won't have that issue again. This is something that we believe is deeply groundbreaking. And um, when you, uh, I, I, I hesitate, and I've done a lot of research on this, but I've looked at about 100 schools behavior policies over the last couple of months. And I haven't seen one that, that doesn't involve detentions, exclusions, and all sorts of things that are all negative. That has to change. And I think, and I know, that our culture at this school supports a different way. And it is something that I am extremely excited about. 
and it will have a fundamentally positive impact on developing our young people to be the best versions of themselves. Because character is so important. It is the engine of everything that we do. Our characters continue to grow throughout our lives, but when we're at school, it is the most formative time of our life. It is when the foundations of your future are truly laid. And this is why we go on about it quite a bit. And it's why we have to help our children to actually understand their characters. I went through my school experience and I think that I was fortunate that I accidentally developed character traits and I was very lucky to have a very supportive family. Just think how much better we can do if we really target positive character traits. We develop them, we help children to really understand themselves. Just as they do when they understand themselves as a learner. Just see the value that, that has as they emerge into a constantly dynamic world and they are able to have the skills, the foundations within themselves to meet whatever challenges they come up against. And we cultivate that character again through the daily experience of our children, through their interactions with teachers and staff that they have great relationships with, and through the weekly foci in the Fimbra Flyer, the seven habits, all of those factors, learnability, sportability, which I'll talk about shortly, all of those things transpire to develop character over time. And just like learning, character does not develop overnight. If we think about our children starting at the school at the age of two, they've got a wonderfully long journey of education through to their 18. Wonderfully long journey. And during that time, their character will develop, it will form, and we will see that happen. And if they are in an environment where they are nurtured, encouraged, supported, challenged, and given the ability to understand how they are developing from a character perspective. Then they understand that learnability is actually all about their internal engine. Then their achievement in class becomes something that they actually have independent control over. And suddenly we start to move into a situation where they have got all the skills they need, all the inherent traits driven by their character that enable them to be the best version of themselves. So we will keep going. We will keep making videos. We'll keep talking about character. We will keep building the I wills. We will do all of these things to help the children to be the absolute best version of themselves by having a strong character. And of course, for that to occur, you need to have great professionals in place. Great professionals that are going to inspire children, inspire them through their strong relationships, inspire them through their exceptional teaching, which brings about great learning. You know, when, when we evaluate teaching and learning at the school. We do it through class learnability. Because if you walk into a class and you see great learning behaviors where children are eagerly soaking up everything that's on offer, they're contributing, they're seeking feedback, they are driving their own learning, then that teacher is exceptional. Because that teacher has achieved that relationship and that inspiring set of circumstances with those children. And that is where we are so fortunate because the standard of teachers at this school is better than I have ever experienced in any other school that I've been a part of. And yes, that's come about because people want to come and work at a great school like Bimbra and word is spread about the way that we operate but it's also come about because our teaching staff are committed to developing themselves to challenging their children and to 
making sure that they are the best versions of themselves. So we continue to develop opportunities for their professional learning. We seek feedback from children. I, I was sat in my uh, office with Arada and Sol, our head girl, her boy, um, this week, and we were, we were going through a draft new behaviour policy. And we were going through it line by line, and it was all about what I've just been talking about. And they, they were just so excited about it. And what was really interesting in that discussion is that they instantly reflected on the teachers who worked with them. And they said, well, that's going to work because look at this, what happens here. And I can see where this, and they were able to use their knowledge of experience of the school and the, the teachers that they work with to see how we can develop as a school. Now, I've never experienced student leadership quite like that. Because usually, if you have a school council, it's focused on what's being served for dinner and, um, and what, you know, what, 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 what extra things are we going to buy for students. I, we need to do more than that, because children are the consumers of everything that we do. They're in every classroom. They see every teacher. One of the greatest things you can do is actually shadow a child all day and see the range of experiences they have as they go from classroom to classroom. And yes, that will be a beautifully diverse experience because we don't want teachers that are automatons that are doing following a set of rules. Before I came to Finbar, I worked for an academy trust and my, my job basically was to go into a school that was in special measures and put in a plan to get it out of that really, really quickly. Now, what that involved basically was giving everyone an instruction book and say, do this all the same, which was great because it lasted and it turned it around, but it wasn't driven by passion of the individuals. What we have at Fimbra is teachers who are passionate about what they do, who are driven to take their children forward, and that is absolutely amazing. And after all, teaching and learning is our core business. And it leads to making sure that our children have the best possible learnability, achievement and progress. And going into this new school year, we are adopting new approaches to keeping you updated about children's progress at the school and children's learnability. Reporting more regularly, giving you opportunities to see teachers in different ways. And remember, any parents here this evening you never have to wait. I think we get stuck in the paradigms of our own educational experience. Isn't it amazing that, that a parent's evening is like something that we've all kind of done. We wait for the moment that it happens in the year and then we tootle along and we sit down and we listen to some feedback about our children after we've had the report. That's not a modern way of doing things. That's not the world that we live in. At Fimbra, if you want some updates about your children, you can have them whenever you like. You know, you've just got to ask. We'll give you them at regular intervals to keep you updated, but we want a dynamic relationship where if you want to know what's going on, if you're really pleased that they've made this great bit of progress and you want to know what's actually happened, then come in and ask. Let's talk about it because actually, discussing children's learning and their great things that are going on and even the areas where they've got challenges and need to prove, improve is such an exciting, engaging thing to do. So let's do more of it. So as we go into this school year, we are tracking learnability, achievement and progress more closely than we ever have done before. We're making sure that character really is driving best outcomes for children. We're making sure that they are able to achieve better value added than they could do anywhere else. Because that's what it's all about. But we're not doing that by becoming an exam hothouse. We've had students start at Fimbra that are, start with us maybe in year 10 or 11 that are burnt out. Because they've been in an environment where it's all pressure, 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 pressure. My um, uh, niece, she goes to one of the most exclusive independent schools in London. I won't say what it is, that would be unfair. And she can't wait to get out of it. Why can't she wait to get out of it? And she wouldn't mind me saying this to you because she's talked with, we've spoken on the phone. She's, she's 
she's desperate to find a new record because she's she's very very able. You know, she's uh, she will she'll she'll go to Oxford, Cambridge. Very very bright. But she said that everyone at her school is stressed out of their heads because everything is about pressure, pressure, but there's no focus on developing character. So where does it go? Well, what happens to pressure when there's no character? It becomes stress. What does that become? Mental health issues. What does that become? Children that can't cope in the world. That's what we have to combat. So if we build character, we keep expectations high, and we support children to be their best, then they've got the engine to get there themselves and they know what the journey is and what the expectation is. So we will keep everyone deeply updated with everything that is going on. Of course, going into this year, particularly parents of children in the prep school will have seen significant changes to the curriculum. In pre-prep, likewise, the curriculum continues to develop. And in the senior school, the three-year GCSE model the phases of learning in year seven and eight, and then nine to 11, and then sixth form, are bringing about incredible rewards. We've got children that are able to do early entries, and this summer, students in year 10 who took examinations scored exceptional grade outcomes. Now, that is a great piece of evidence of why you don't have to wait. You don't have to do things the same as everyone else. You need to respond and react to help children to be their best when they're ready to be their best and give them lots and lots of opportunities. Now curriculum needs to be structured, it needs to be exciting, it needs to be engaging, it needs to develop creativity, it needs to enable teachers to really thrive with what they're doing. And we share that with you every term in terms of what children are learning and the curriculum in terms of academic subjects is coupled directly with the curriculum to develop their character. All the experiences that they have day in, day out. And on the subject of developing character, where better does character develop than in sport? And sport ability developed across last year and now fully implemented is a way of seeing how our children apply their character in a sporting context. How they are able to have the resilience when it's physically difficult. How they are able to drive themselves to work harder physically than they have done before. And of course, the parallels with learning in the classroom are absolute and direct. But those things are really, really important. And then in addition to that, we have our sports professionals. And our sports professionals in the sixth form, students who potentially, hopefully, have a fantastic career in sport ahead of them, whatever that might look like, whether they're going to be a professional sportsman or woman, whether they are going to work in the sports industry, whatever, they are beautiful role models. Just like in school, we have our sixth formers acting as mentors, and they really inspire the children. Our sports professionals have the opportunity to work with a team, to inspire them to be their best and to make sure that also they're gaining the vital skills of coaching. It's an incredible win-win. And that, and that doesn't mean that they're just left to their own devices. This is very, very structured. It's developed, but it's a great opportunity. And when our children are participating in sport, they're also obviously developing their physical well-being. When you think that most children in this country probably get a maximum of about an hour of exercise a week, or an hour of structured physical education, maybe two. Our children at Fimbra get at least four, and in most cases, five, six, seven, eight, even more. You know, this morning, I. I but out there to do running club, 30 students, 30 children running around, you know, wanting to do that at eight o'clock in the morning. Isn't that amazing? I'm sure their parents don't always thank me. They've got to get them there that early. Boxing club today. Uh, yes, we do do that. And it is fun. They don't hit each other. So please, but great turnout. And, you know, I, I, in the evening, 
I will sometimes go down to the gym and it's full because children are developing the life skills of exercise and they're doing it without being told they've got to do it they're doing it they're doing it because they want to do it because they're inspired by sport and then there's all the extracurricular whether it's Duke of Edinburgh's award which has just skyrocketed at Bimbra you know I think 35 40 year nine signed up for DV this week it's amazing they're all going to be hiking across the Suffolk and Wales countryside. They're going to be canoeing up the River Severn and along the Norfolk Broads, and they will develop through their bronze, silver, and gold awards. If they're not doing Duke of Edinburgh's award, they might be doing Bex Robotics. They may be going to Architecture Club. They may be playing games. They may be doing their well-being sessions in a prep school. The range of extra activities for our children are quite incredible and they have massively rocketed in the um, last year. This year, there is not an evening when there isn't something they could be doing. And that might be supporting them with their homework. It could be that they've got extra football. It could be that they're in Bring It On The Musical or they're auditioning next week for Moana or Whatever it is, it's there and it's available for them and the sign up to it is outstanding and it will continue to be so. And what I really love about this is that it's developing a momentum of its own. So children are commissioning activities themselves and a beautiful example of that would have been Robin Basu last year. So Robin, um, who uh, has just started at medical school, decided at the start of year 12 that he wanted to start a medical society. And um, so he said, of course you can. And so he ran across two years of medical society. He had guest speakers in, he had debates, and drove that all himself with a little bit of support to help you know, make sure that it all worked and all that sort of thing. But that sort of self-driven opportunity is exactly what we want to see and we will continue to see. This week, again in my meeting with Sol and Rada, they presented me with a set of ideas about the house system. I said to them, I think the house system needs some work. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure it's functioning in the way that we wanted to at the school the week before and then they came back with well we want to do this they didn't see it as a fait accompli they saw it as a challenge and they are going to work with that with all the good stuff that's already in place of course developing character and the focus on character is actually a proactive approach to ensuring best physical and mental well-being because that's the center of it all but we had three days of training with all of the staff at the school before this term started and on one day of that we had this incredible day where we experienced a whole range of strategies that we can employ with our children as tutors and as teachers and where we can help them to understand themselves, we can help them to be mentally robust, we can help them to talk about things that are concerning them, we can actually create an environment where they feel positive, they feel happy because of all the different strategies, whether it's yoga, whether it's their zones of regulation, which is this great thing where you have different colours that describe your mood, and that, believe it or not, is extremely powerful for a child that maybe has limited emotional literacy, they're feeling, Ugh! but they don't know how to say it. So you show them a color and they move to it. And then suddenly, actually they've got a bit of control. Now there's far more to it than that. Lego therapy, circle time, all these things support the children. Maybe it's a yoga session, but they support them 
to have control of their well-being, to feel confident, to be mentally, physically and spiritually well as they go through their school lives. And of course, it's all about it being the best preparation for life. A beautiful strap line. This is, um, we, uh, I got very excited about it. So each year with the sixth form, we have, and our sixth form has, is developing beautifully uh, and grown and, you know, it is, I, I really think it's become a destination sixth form, which is a great situation for us to have. But what we do at the start of the um, sixth form, and it started to a degree last year, so the year before last. At the end of COVID, uh, the children were, had had missed a lot of time and we decided that actually you couldn't just let them finish their um, teacher entrance exams and then just go off. Why would you do that? Now, I, I've never understood actually why children, when they've finished their exams, like just kind of finish and just drift off. So we decided to have a two week induction and part of that we had an adventure up Snowdon and it really was a challenge for all of us actually but, uh, but to get them all up Snowdon, the entire sixth form, get them all down Snowdon, stay in a campsite that, had, that was infested with midges and, uh, and, and then there was this wonderful moment when we were right by a lake where spontaneously in the evening they all went in the lake and it was, it was memories to last a lifetime but incredibly bonding a great great experience and you can it i i walk into the sixth form um study room and i can see now the impact that that experience had on them how that developed their connections but this year to, to mix it up a little bit we had a treasure trail around london where basically they had clues to about 25 landmarks across the capital city and uh, they went round in groups and they had to get photos at as many of them as possible. They had a member of staff with them. And um, again, a great opportunity to have fun, but also an opportunity, if they didn't have it already, to travel around London, to use the tube, to decide how am I going to get from the Natural History Museum to the Houses of Parliament? And what's this new line and where does that go and actually how do I get this train and how do I pay for that they're all tremendously um, important opportunities for development and basically they help construct a character for success and that's what it's all about so across this school year we are continuing our development of character. We are pushing our boundaries with boarding to enable children to feel even more at home than they have done even before. We are expanding our curriculum. We're building opportunities for greater updates around the learnability, achievement and progress that your children make. We are pushing the frontiers of sport and extracurricular activities. We're ensuring our children have the best physical and mental well-being that we possibly can because we've worked on the development of character. We've worked on the development of character because we've got teachers and staff at the school that are massively committed to that because they all form a part of a culture that is all about young people being the best version of themselves. Enjoying the incredible new facilities at the school and living the highest standards because they have a character that brings that about rather than doing it because if they don't, they'll get told off. And there is a big difference. But after being the best version of themselves, we then want to ensure absolutely that better never stops and that we never stop challenging ourselves and each other to be even better. And even, even us as adults 
could continue and must continue to do that. And this is the culture for success at Finborough School. This is why I am so proud and perpetually inspired to be the head teacher at this school. And why next year I will stand here and share all sorts of other exciting things that we will continue to develop because as it says on the slide, better never stops. I thank you all for listening. Thank you.